Okay, well, happy Wednesday morning to you all. It's a beautiful, clear morning in Houston today. It's a really cool, 63 degrees. Humidity's not too high. I think it's 70% or something like that. Not bad at all. Anyway, I'm about to head out on my work commute this morning, but I got an upgrade uh, that I'm going to put on the bike. Uh, the quad lock vibration damper. Uh, it fits on their ball mount or any of the other mounts that they've got and it helps to uh, calm down the you know sharp impulse vibrations uh, that come through the handlebars or the mount for your you know, protect your phone a little bit. Uh, I haven't had a problem with any of my cameras dying on my phones but I've heard that uh, a lot of uh, iPhone owners uh, do have that issue because the uh, optical stabilization. There's actually a mechanical element to the, the camera in there. The Samsungs might be the same, but I really haven't had any problem with the cameras on mine yet, but I'm going to try to fix that. The problem that I have had is the uh, sharp impulse uh, bumps. You know, you hit a pothole, something like that, and it's enough of a vibration that it'll torque the mount. It'll actually, you know, there's enough inertia that it'll shift the mount a little bit. Uh, or in the case of the Ram X grips, it was tossing my phone out of the case or the grip. Uh, so anyway, yeah, back to this. I haven't read the instructions, but it looks pretty straightforward. And I see that they've got thread lock paste on here. I don't know if you guys can see that. That's a nice touch. I'm impressed. So what we're going to do is unscrew this little bad boy. They include the little Allen wrench in the kit. These are, uh, I think I paid $19.95 or $19.99, direct from Quadlock on their website. So, I'm sure you can get them a number of places, but, uh, okay, and, uh, 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 yeah, uh, oh, I see what it is, that's cool. Okay, so the other, I don't know if you guys are able to see that on camera or not, but this screw is what goes into there, and then this screw just sandwiches through that, and this is a nice hollow little hole that I'm going to be able to reach through with this guy. <laughs> Slick. Okay. Now, maybe I should RTFM, hey? Figure out the orientation, whether that needs to be up, down, sideways, round and round. Does it have an orientation preference? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I don't see. Nah. Because it looks like it can go flat. Alright, so they've got it tip up doesn't matter. Hey, I lost a screw. Lost a piece. I felt it fall out. Doesn't matter. Okay, good. I lost the screw and the piece. <clears throat> Better not do that, eh? That's kind of the important part, isn't it? Okay, then. So first things first, let's put this in here. What do you think, guys? What do you think? That way? that way. I think that way looks better. Let's see if I can catch the little, uh, it's got teeth on there that lock it into the other piece to set your angle. Yeah, that's good. All right, so let's see if this is long enough to get some real torque. Does it go, does it go, does it go? Oh yeah, it does. Look at that. Just long enough. All right. Give her a good couple of foot pounds. And back. So all this is doing is adding a little bit of thickness, maybe what, an inch, three quarters of an inch. And uh, oh yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna make it vibrate around a little bit. Uh, we'll see as I ride how that plays. Um, but it's definitely gonna be shock damped better than it was. So let's try that out, see how it plays. I'm not sure. I will take this with me. I'm not bringing my tank bag today because it pisses me off. Tank bag blows open all the time. A couple of the guys I rode with over the weekend uh, had tank bags on theirs, and uh, they said they didn't really have the problem with theirs blowing open, so I don't know. Maybe I got yet another lemon. Put my trash in here because I don't feel like taking it back into the house right now. Any, meeny, miny, mo. Trash can. Okay, so, oops, upside down. So back to the usual. Yeah, so that's going to be a uh, bobble heading around on the road. I'm not sure if I'm going to like that. 
I mean, it's it'll save the phone for sure, but it might drive me a little bit insane. We'll find out. Okay, let's get this on the road. So, you stay here, Grace. Okay, off we go. Give this a try. I bought several of them because I have several of these mounts, and I thought, hey, that'll be nice. I'll have some kind of extra protection for the phone, but if it uh, bounces around too much, then I might have to rethink it. So I'm trying out some new camera settings today as well. Um, I don't normally record in 4K because the GoPro Quick application uh, is just notoriously buggy. And in order to get the gauge data out to put the overlays for speed, GPS, all that kind of thing on there, you have to uh, run it through that program to uh, burn in that overlay. And uh, it's just really buggy. And when you turn on 4K, it's even worse. So. give it a try. Uh, the other camera settings on the GoPro, uh, I have been looking around for better ways to do the color grading and exposure control and all that kind of stuff without resorting to full manual doing it in post, which is a real pain. Uh, I tried them a few times a while back, uh, setting the color options in the GoPro uh, using ProTune, set it to flat color profile and a couple things like that. And it's okay, but it does involve a lot of post-edit, uh, cleanup, and tuning. So I'm using kind of a mix of some recommended settings, ISO, white balance, all that. Uh, and then uh, letting the GoPro do part of it. So if I don't want to go through all the crazy histograms and color wheels and everything else, then I can just uh, check my exposure and you know do basic... Uh, saturation, you know, that kind of thing, just bring up the highlights a little bit, add some color depth to it without going crazy. Anyway, long story short, <clears throat> I'm trying the 4K settings uh, for a little while, and uh, that gives obviously much cleaner video, and it also gives me more to work with in post-edit because I can trim and do a lot of other stuff to uh, uh, downsample uh, if I need to. Editing is a time vampire. It's a black hole. Once you go down that path, man, it's forever to get out, it seems like. Because then, once you get a good result, you look at it and you go, oh, wow, that's fantastic. Then you go back and look at all your previous stuff and go, ew, <laughs> yuck. <laughs> so every project you do from that point forward, you're looking at it going, ah, I really need to do this. Oh, I should do that. Oh, I could do this. I have a ton of video sitting in the queue that I'm trying to find time to chew on and get uh, chopped up into something I can use. Post out a few. Uh, I got at least two, two more ride series, maybe three, uh, before I go on my next trip. That's uh, at the end of October. So I mentioned it in a previous vlog. I'm going to try to put these out in consecutive chronological order. Uh, I'm going to be going on a uh, Riker trip up to Arkansas uh, at the end of October. I'll be leaving Houston on October 21st, which is uh, Wednesday, if I recall, and uh, then getting into Oklahoma City uh, you know, the same day, hopefully. I might leave a day earlier than that and uh, take my time, but we'll see how that works. Uh, anyway, the official meetup is going to be the 22nd through the 25th, so we got four days of that. Uh, and we're just going to be riding through the Ozark Mountains, having a good old time. We'll be uh, camping in the Queen Wilhelmina State Park uh, over there in Arkansas. So, if anybody's interested in tagging along, drop me a line. We'd be glad to have you. 
you're not a moto camper, uh, there, there are options, but I'll try to corrupt you and sway you to the dark side. The couple of guys that uh, have been going with me lately uh, on these adventures were not moto campers before I corrupted them. And now they're like, yeah, I, I don't see why I would ever want to stay in a hotel again, except maybe after being on the road for several days and I want a hot shower and do my laundry, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, it's just so much better to stay outdoors if you can. Adds to the experience and uh, <laughs> saves money. Makes the trip a lot cheaper. You figure, you know, even a cheap hotel is probably going to cost you 60 bucks a night. Decent ones are 100, 120, 150 on up, uh, and that's per night. So if you take a five, six day trip, you're looking at money there. It's money. My usual long trip agenda is I'll spend about five days out on the road, uh, sleeping on you know, whatever, tent camping, hammock camping. Uh, about every five or six days, I'm kind of looking for either a campground that has a bathhouse so I can clean myself up a bit or uh, a hotel. I'll just stay one night, sleep in a real bed, and then back to the dirt. So here we are, we're on the highway, it's pretty bumpy on this section of I-10, and the phone is it's bobbling around a little bit, but it's not too bad. I need to adjust the angle of it now because it's sitting a little further out, so we need to tweak it in a few degrees. But, ooh, it's not so bad, so far. If I'm trying to look at it, obviously it is moving around more than it used to, so I'm trying to read directions on GPS may be a little tricky. On the Riker, uh, this might be a very worthwhile add-on because I've had my phone jump out of the X mount on the Riker before. Uh, which is the reason, one of the reasons why I switched over to the quad lock. Uh, the other, you know, the primary cause of that is because of the direct steering. There's no power assist, so anytime you hit a bump, it's uh, it's really jacking the handlebars around pretty hard. Much harder than the motorcycle. Way, way harder than the motorcycle. Uh, you know, the, the bump itself, you can get that uh, through any bike with forks, but uh, it's the yaw effect when you hit a bump. You know, the, the bars jack side to side pretty violently. So uh, the Super Cub uh, was also doing that out on my last road trip. I noticed that my phone mount, even with this uh, quad lock, was vibrating around really hard uh, because a lot of the uh, road bumps are coming straight through. You got that extended mount, which raises your moment of inertia there. It makes it a lot more susceptible to get bang around acceleration shock the front of the bike is much more calm now i wouldn't say it's more planted it's kind of more planted but it's still you know i've got the alignment issue that i always complain about uh, but as far as the uh, front suspension uh and these elkas make a night and day difference in the way the bike feels i'm really impressed i still need to tweak them a little bit i think i'm going to back down the compression uh, damping just a touch. I'll probably leave the rebound right where it is. It feels good. Uh, the compression is a little stiff, so I might drop a couple clicks out of it. So today I am uh, headed into the office to meet my business partner, and uh, he's got a GoFast toy that needs to be dropped off at a local shop. Uh, he's got a 700 and something horsepower uh, Mitsubishi Evo uh, that's got an idle leak, some kind of a surge problem. And it's uh, full custom, you know, it runs uh, only E85, and uh, it's got a, I believe it's an AEM ECU in it, engine management system. So this shop is a uh, AEM authorized dealer and tuner. So. He's going to take this over to them and let them take a look at it, figure out if it's uh, vacuum heat or if we've got an idle air control or whatever's going on with it. So I've been storing my Accord here at the warehouse for a few weeks just because I've been 
running around with the truck and doing different things. That is uh, my rally car, my poor neglected uh, child of yesteryear. Uh, it's been sitting out for a number of years now. It needs to be totally gone through. Uh, but this is a, a wolf in sheep's clothing right here. Uh, I took this thing, had it sent up to uh, Archer Racing in Minnesota and had them build this uh, full rally spec. Uh, it's got about $30,000 worth of motor and transmission in it right now. Pushing uh, high 600s at the crank and as I recall it was low 600s, like 6 20 some, I have to look at the dyno sheets, but 600 something at the wheels, all four wheels, all wheel drive, fun stuff. So the Evo that we're gonna go drive over to another shop today is the older brother, or sorry, younger brother of this one. This is the older brother. So this is the first generation uh, Mitsubishi rally car right there. All right, let's get this thing started and out of here.